six application tips from a real life recruiter. In this video, I'm going to give you six tips I've learned from a real life recruiter so that you can improve your application exactly what it says on the tin. Just before we get into that, let me introduce myself. My name's Owen. I'm a degree apprentice and I help people get degree apprenticeships. Last year, I helped people get degree apprenticeships from loads of companies like JLR, HSBC, KPMG, Amazon, just to name a few. So if you're interested and you get value from this video, just go down and click the first link in the description. It's my program and it helps people get degree apprenticeships. We've had some amazing results. So if you want to learn more about this topic, go and click the first thing in the description. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So as I said, six application tips from a real life recruiter i've been having some sessions with him over the past couple of weeks to try and learn more about applications recruitments all this sort of thing so i'm basically now going to be passing this advice on to you giving you sips application tips that you can help with your degree apprenticeship application so just some background to this guy um he's personally hired dozens of people over his career originally he was in the pharmaceutical industry and now it's more in sort of the management and technology industry so you're going to find this video really useful if you're applying to any degree apprenticeship so let's get started straight away number one show not tell okay a lot of people here seen they put in their cv and they just list their skills okay so they'll put an example they'll put a um a section in their cv called key skills and they'll just put some and they'll just put some bullet points right communicative works well in a team problem solver interpersonal whatever right the problem with this is it doesn't give a recruiter any confidence okay it doesn't give them any belief that you actually have the skills here's why anyone can write these bullet points okay i could come in right now key skills bullet point communicative works well on a team problem solver i could put in here that i can like juggle and i can do like a handstand and all this i can do a backflip right anyone can write these things here doing a bullet point listing some key skills okay it doesn't actually give them any confidence so don't just list those in your cv like that the recruiters don't like it okay here's what you can do instead give examples of when you've used these skills okay this is actually powerful because this is about showing not telling because no one believes you when you just tell them oh i've got these skills show me prove it to me okay the way you prove it is just giving examples of when you've used it okay rather than saying you're communicative and work well in a team how about you say i did gold dov and the expedition required a group of six of us to collaborate as a team and like i was in a residential i had to work with people i never met before right that's how you can actually show because now they see oh yes this guy actually does have communication skills he actually does work well in a team because he's done it in dov he hasn't just written it down on a bullet point on a piece of word number two a picture is worth a thousand words this is kind of similar to the show not tell one but you can say i did this work experience okay cool you can say i have done a design okay cool you can make that a thousand times better if you do a picture it's as simple as that okay if you say you do a design it's like okay cool when you actually show proof of the design, they're like, wow, he's actually done it. He's had to draw that. Similarly, you can say, oh, I did work experience. But then you could show your work experience certificate to show that you've like given them evidence. Okay, so a picture is worth a thousand words. Add a portfolio to your application. Okay, like a portfolio where it's got a bunch of like maybe your designs in, maybe a bunch of stuff you've done, your work experience, a couple of photos from your work experience, that sort of thing. Maybe some reports you've done, screenshots of your designs, all that sort of thing. Add that portfolio to your CV and then also bring it to your interview especially if it's like an in-person interview if you can bring like a physical hard copy like 10 pages folder which you can literally pass to the interviewer they can flick through see all the different designs see all the different work experience you've been doing that is worth a thousand words and that is gonna be really good for your application okay portfolio bring it number three loyalty and long-term commitment okay so this is something that this recruiter emphasized to me a lot about the modern like the, the present day job market is very dodgy okay because churn is high loads of people are just starting jobs and then going to different jobs and just quitting after like three months just like everyone's just moving around everywhere trying to get like the best pay or the best package or whatever it is everyone's moving around that's what churn means basically people starting a job and then like leaving really soon they're not staying for like five years ten years they're like leaving after six months leaving after one year all this sort of thing and you actually find it with degree apprenticeships churn for some apprenticeships is very high a lot of people just start the degree apprenticeship and then they just stop after one or two years because they don't like it right the problem with this churn is recruitment is expensive okay because recruitment they're having to pay someone like someone from hr to go through all your cvs go through all your cover letters go th they're having to pay for online testing they're having to pay people to do interviews right people are like taking time out of their day job to go and interview you then they have to onboard you and that requires hr people who they're paying all this sort of thing recruitment is expensive they don't want to have to be recruiting a new person for a role every single year or every single six months they don't want to like you to start within two months you leave and then they have to go through the whole recruitment cost again ideal situation for them like ideal situation is 
you join for a company and then you literally stay there for 20 years because it means they don't have to pay these recruitment costs okay so this is where you can leverage this in your application if you can show that you're a serious candidate who's going to be loyal and has a long-term commitment then you're more likely they can you're going to be more desirable okay because if they look at you and you're like oh this guy doesn't really care i feel like he might leave after six months he might leave after one year or this sort of thing he might just quit after like the first week i don't want that because that's gonna be really expensive for me to replace that person and hire a new person if you can show you're a serious candidate you're gonna be here for the long term you're gonna be loyal to the company all this sort of thing massively increases your attraction okay the actual step the way you can do this is prepare for interview questions like what are your goals what would you like to get out of this apprenticeship where do you see yourself in five years time those sort of long-term questions if you have really good answers to those questions it's going to show you've properly thought about the long term you have this long-term commitment you have this loyalty okay things like what are your goals or where do you see yourself in five years time if you're doing engineering talk about something like so i want to successfully complete my degree apprenticeship then i'd like to stay within the engineering industry and i'd like to move towards professional membership i'd I, in particular like to become a chartered engineer um so that i can do da, 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 da. number four soul and character okay this is actually really important okay soul and character and this is what this recruiter like made clear to me he said soul and character is super important because you need to fit into the team Okay, this isn't just about, okay, we need to hire a degree apprentice, let's just get anyone, okay? They are actually actively thinking, will you fit into the team? Okay, because the recruiter, he's thinking, you know what, in my team we have a bit of banter, right? So I want some guy who's got a bit of fun about him, he's got, you know what I mean, he's going to fit in. I don't just want to hire some geek, because then he's not going to get on with the rest of the team, it's going to be a bit weird, right? This is where you want to show your soul and character, show that you're like a real normal person, like, you know what I mean? If you just do some generic, bland boring application it's like how does this guy know he's not just hiring like chat gpt like hiring some ai right some ai bot right he wants to hire someone who's like a real person they got a bit of character they got a bit like fun about them they're gonna be a good person to talk to in the office like they want to be with you in the office all this sort of thing that's why soul and character is super important otherwise you just be, like you just look like a geek and some co- and like at the end of the day you're gonna be working in an office with other people they don't want some sort of solid like stiff like NPC geek sort of person. They want someone who's got a bit of character about them. How can you show this character? Well, the number one way of doing it is just put some irrelevant hobbies and interests in, okay? Because this is what this recruiter told me. Even if like you're applying to engineering or you're playing to management or pharmaceutical, put in that you care about fitness and go to the gym. Like put in that you play chess, right? Put in that you play for the Sunday league football team. Put in that like you're a, you're a DJ and you like produce beats on the side like in your free time right because then it shows you're a real person you've actually do you actually do stuff in your free time you have stuff to talk about it's like they're going to see the person's going to see on your cv oh you play for a sunday league football team that means i'm going to be able to come into the office with you um on like a monday morning and talk to you about the football over the weekend oh yeah how did man united do oh did you watch the euros right all this sort of thing when you don't have any irrelevant hobbies and it's just work 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 it's like you're not even a real person they don't even want you in the team okay so put in these irrelevant hobbies, it's going to show that soul and character. And then also just a bonus, it's just going to show some skills as well. Because even with these like irrelevant hobbies, which you're putting in for this soul and character and making you seem like a real person, you can also get in skills there as well. Like going to the gym, as well as knowing, oh, you're a person who like does cool stuff, cool. You also have dedication, you also have perseverance. When you do chess, it's like, okay, this guy's got hobbies, nice. Also like two in one, bonus, it shows you have problem solving skills. It shows you can think strategically, it shows you have memory, all this sort of thing. This is what I did in my one. I mentioned my trumpet. Trumpet, nothing to do with engineering, nothing to do with technology, nothing to do with pharmaceutical, anything like that. But it's like, okay, this guy's got hobbies. He he has a life. Cool. And then on top of that, it showed my skills. It showed organization. It showed time management. It showed confidence to play solos on my trumpet. All this sort of thing, okay? So that's how you can show that soul and character. Put some irrelevant hobbies slash interests in your CV and be ready to talk about some of those irrelevant hobbies in your interview. Okay, number five. This is more of a mindset thing. Okay, and this is coming from directly from a recruiter. The application process is supposed to be annoying, okay? If you've had experiences of application processes in the past, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're, this is like your first time applying to things and you're going to be applying to a degree apprenticeship this year, well, this is what you can look forward to. They're super annoying, okay? You have like an initial on, not online application. You have to fill in loads of random stuff. You have to like fill in your grades, but then you have to like 
put the date in like 10 times. You have to put your school name in 10 times. You then have to put like your qualifications in three times and your address here and your address here. And you have to do all this stuff. It, it's super annoying. And then once you've done that, you then have to do online testing, then a video interview, then an assessment center, all this. It's like so many different stages. It takes up a lot of your time, takes up a lot of your bandwidth. This is coming directly from a recruiter. He told me he does this on purpose. When he recruits people, he purposely makes the application process annoying. Okay. And the reason for that is literally just to decrease the number of applicants they have. Okay, because they already receive thousands of applications, right? They just want to get rid of the people who aren't serious, okay? So if there's a bit of the application process that's annoying, like filling in your grades and people can't be bothered to do it, then they're not going to do it. And it's basically cut down his applications. Like there could be like a thousand people who were going to apply because you had to fill in a CV and a cover letter. They just couldn't be bothered. So they didn't. That's now saved him like 40 hours of work okay so this is just a mindset thing just to go into it be prepared for the application process to be annoying but just remember it's supposed to be like that and it's, it's like that on purpose just to get rid of the people who aren't serious who are just messing around because the, the, the people are clicking on it hoping they can apply in one minute when they realize they have to do like two hours of work to apply they're just not going to bother it's going to save like him the hassle it's going to save the recruiters the hassle okay so just prepared for, be prepared in your mind for this application process to be annoying but it's supposed to be that way all you have to do is just push through it um, because, yeah, you have to do it. It is what it is. And that's the application process. Just make sure you do it all correctly because it has to be done. Now, moving on to the final one. First impressions matter. Okay. So everyone knows that phrase, oh, don't judge a book by its cover or whatever. They do anyway. Okay. Everyone just judges everyone off a of first impression. As much as you can say, oh, I give people a chance. I don't judge people. In your mind, there's like subconscious, unconscious stuff which straight away judges it. Okay. So you don't want to be leaving a bad first impression with these recruiters. Okay. Because you might only get one chance. Okay. He's told me that, for example, if he sees spelling mistakes, just reject it instantly. Okay. And it's like, maybe you just made a genuine spelling mistake. You'd actually be a really good candidate. At the end of the day, they get thousands of applicants, thousands of applications. He doesn't have time to just be like giving you the benefit of the doubt. He basically wants a reason to get rid of people as soon as possible because he wants to cut the number down. He wants to cut the number down from a thousand applications to like 10 people he's going to interview, right? So any reason he can to get rid of you, he will. Okay, so you need to make sure that you like have a good first impression. So you leave a bad first impression, likely these recruiters are just going to get rid of you because there's so many other people who have le- who've left a good impression, if you make a bad one, then they can't be bothered with you. Check your application for errors, okay? Make sure you have zero spelling mistakes. Get someone else to read it. Read it out loud. Put it through spell check. Put it through Grammarly. Whatever you need to do, make sure there's no errors. Make sure you don't miss anything. Make sure you've covered everything. Otherwise, it's just a reason for them to kick you out. When you go to your interview, make sure you're dressing well. Okay, don't just turn up in some like t-shirt or hoodie or anything like that. Because again, that's all they need is a reason just to be like, nope, this guy's not serious. Um, he he just came dressed in a hoodie. I don't think he'd be the right for this workplace. Okay, again, like be professional in all your communications. If you're in person, go for a handshake um, at the interview, um, all this sort of thing. Make sure you have questions to ask them at the end of the interview. Um, just be completely professional. Because all you have to do is have like one non-professional interaction or one non-professional thing you put in your CV. And it's like, that's just a reason to get rid of you. Okay. And then finally, just complete everything on time. Um, So for example, after the initial application, they'll send you like online testing. Oh, you need to do this assessment in the next three days. If you don't complete it in the next three days, say you miss it and it's on like the fourth or fifth day you realize, chances are they're just going to reject you. Okay. Because it's like, if you didn't complete your online testing on time, How do I know that you're not just going to be a bad employee who's always late to things? How do I know you're always going to be late to meetings? How do I know you're going to complete work on time? You're going to complete assignments on time. If you couldn't even do the online testing application process on time. Similarly, if you're like late to your interview by five minutes, 10 minutes, it's like that gives them the impression that you're going to be late to meetings in the workplace by five minutes, by 10 minutes. You're not going to complete stuff on time. Okay, so just make sure you're completing everything on time. Complete those online testing on time. Complete the interviews on time. Okay, turn up to the interviews five minutes before. Make sure the technology is all set up because all it takes is just you're late on something. They just can't be bothered. They've got a hundred other people who are actually taking this seriously and giving a good first impression. Okay, this was a really important one that this recruiter I've been talking to, he drilled this into me um, that first impressions really matter. Okay. So there we go. I've given you six tips that I've learned from a real life recruiter so you can improve your application. I hope you found that useful. 
if you're interested in this sort of thing and you want to find out more about getting a degree apprenticeship offer, you can have a look at my program. We've had some insane results helping people uh, get offers from loads of companies. Go and click the first link in the description now. Thanks for watching today. Hope that's helped. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out. See you in a bit.